is Math 152. We're going to look at Part 3 of Section 2.2. And uh, we've done integration by slicing. Uh, we've done it by slicing when we have disks, right, circles, after we do those rotations around the x-axis, around the y-axis. And now what we're going to do is um, we're going to add one more shape. It's kind of a modified disk. It's called a washer. So let's see. So we want to find the volume of the solid that's made by taking the area between these two functions, bounded between 1 and 3, and rotating it over the x-axis. So let's, uh, let's get a sketch of this. You could use Desmos to grab a sketch. Uh, I know that f of x equals x looks like this. And I know that g of x equals 1 over x uh, looks like this. Um, and let's see these. Well, when x is 1, y is 1 on both of these. Like, they, they intersect at this point, 1, 1. And it's going to go to where x is 3. So it does something like this. So here's my area right here. And now what I want you to notice, what we're going to do is, that's just the area. Like, if we were finding the area between those two curves, right, that minus that, take the integral. But what we're doing now is we're taking this shape and we're rotating it uh, around the x-axis. Kind of like we did with solids before, but notice what happens now is we get this shape that looks like this that has this hole up the middle, right? Like there, there's that hole coming up the middle and then it's solid all through here. Wow. Okay, so let's think about a cross section of this. Just pick some spot in here that we could do a cross section of. Let's do it right here. So we have the center, which is where the x-axis is. And notice that this outside part, that's y equals x. So this radius out to here is x. But then there's a hole in here caused by this, this other shape, this, uh, this 1 over x. So this distance from here to here is 1 over x. So there's, now I have two radii. And notice what I get is this cross-section is... Uh, if these were you know well-drawn circles it looks like a washer right like uh, a disc with a hole in it another disc hole in it so if we want to think about the area of this well the area of the big part is pi r squared so pi is x squared and the area of the smaller part is also pi r squared but pi is 1 over x so we'll subtract out pi over 1 over x squared which is uh, 1 over x squared <laughs> And since those have a pi, both have a pi in them, it's kind of convenient to write it this way. Pi times the first radius squared minus the second radius squared. So there's our area. And so now let's think about this. We have like a bunch of these areas. We're all going to add up from 1 to 3. So if we set this up, it runs from 1 to 3 uh, times the area relative to x as x is changed. Okay, let's do that. Take that pi out of there. Since it's a constant. So now I've got all this. I've got to evaluate this at 3 and subtract this evaluated at 1 from it. Remember, I can do that on my calculator pretty easily. Put it in there into the y1. Then I'm going to evaluate that function at 3 minus that function at 1. And I get 8. So that means this is 8, so this must be 8 pi. So there's my, there's my volume of it right there. Um, not too bad. It's a lot like the disk method, but we have to set up uh, a washer, right? So the area of the larger one minus the area of the smaller one. And that, notice we did that relative to x. We could do it relative to y as well. So same thing. I'm going to get the volume of the shape. Um, of the area that's between these two uh, graphs. So if I graph these, and again, if you're not sure what to do, grab Desmos and you know you can graph them. Graph them on Desmos. I'll just be a little easier to draw on. And Desmos, you know, I use a little cheat that they intercept at that three. If I didn't see that, I could set them equal to each other and solve it, and even just get an approximation. So the area between them is here. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shape and rotate it around the x-axis. So notice that it's going to look like this. Right? Well, this comes, you know, this is all solid in here, and it has this has this hole in it that looks like this little, uh, this little tube part. So there's my shape. Um, and notice that this one is uh, that F, and this one is that G. So if I think about the shape that's going on here, if I just take a cross section, definitely got a washer, right? I've got like this outside part, which has a radius of square root of 25 minus x squared. And this inside part, the hole, which will have a radius of 4 ninths x squared. Both are variable, right? Like this is shrinking down, this is getting wider. So that means my area of this shape would be pi times the outside one squared. Well, that's nice. Square root is just going to be gone because of the squaring. So 25 minus x squared uh, minus this thing squared. And if I square that, 1681st, so don't forget to square that 4 ninths part, x to the fourth. Again, it's running from 0 to 3. So integral from 0 to 3, I'm going to pull out the pi. And then uh, you do it. If you want to take a second, uh, work through that one, shove it on into your calculator, uh, or however you want to do it, you'll get this value. I wanted you to notice also, like if we wanted, if we didn't want to go from zero to three, we could we could truncate truncate this shape. Like the question could have been from one to three, right? Which which changes. So one is here, changes the shape a little bit. Not a ton, right? But it's still that hole. We could then we just do the exact same thing. We just change that to one, and we are we're on our way. So we have these two shapes. Uh, we want the area between them rotated over y. We're trying to find the volume. So first off, we could get uh, a sketch of this shape. Uh, I might just do it in Desmos here. There it is, and I noticed that uh, this one is my x equals y cubed. This one is my x equals y. There's my shape right there. I noticed from negative 1 to 1, so from negative 1 to 1. And so if we rotate that around, going to give this shape that has like um, has a hole in the middle coming off of that curve and then it also has the outside that looks just like a you know straight line hourglass type thing cool so definitely uh, a disc so let's think about this this outer part is y equals x so that's y this inner part is uh, y cubed and I notice I'm doing this rotated relative to y, right? I'm doing it that direction. Um, so my area of this is going to be pi times that outside 1 squared minus that inside 1 squared. So y cubed squared is y to the sixth. Feeling pretty good about that. Uh, and I also notice that this shape has some symmetry. So I'm just going to run it. I think I'll just run it from 0 to 1 and then double it. So I'll have twice the integral uh, from 0 to 1. The pi is can can come out since so it's a constant. Pi squared minus y to the sixth dy. And uh, you know how to do the rest of that. Go ahead and work it on three. You should get a pi over 21. Um, you give it a try. Give it a stop and see, see what happens. Um, just real, real quick, just thinking about this. If we had to run this the other way, if we were given this information, but we were told uh, rotate it over x instead. Look kind of similar, be a little different because the the curvy parts outside. What we need to do then, we have these in terms of a uh, you know I might run it zero to one and double it again. But notice that these are solved for x, and if I want to do it in terms of x. 
I need these in terms of x. So I need to rewrite these as y equals the cube root, uh, cube root of x and y equals x. And then I could set it up from there. But whatever direction we're going, if uh, it needs to be in terms of that, right? This is in terms of y. So it was all set up for the y one. But if we were asked to rotate it over x instead, we would have to solve those equations uh, for y, get, get it in terms of x, and then we could set it up um, with our disk. All right, same sort of thing. I'm going to get an a graph of this up here real quick. So here's some conditions. I got these lines. Um, I've got some bound two to four, uh, and I'm going to say that's going to be for x. And I haven't said anything about anything else yet. Um, so I want to just think about setting up a couple things. So let's say I said uh, area between them. I'm going to find the volume of the shape that results when the area between these two curves is rotated around x. Here's four. So if I rotate this around x, zoom out a little bit to get this picture. It's going to be like this truncated cone. There's my area right there. Oh, interesting. So I'm going to have this big hole in the bottom. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to have this big hole in the bottom of it, right? Because this part gives me my, my hole. So in other words, this shape right here gets rotated all the way around. See how there's like, it's empty there, but it comes solid at the very top. And then it has that little hole coming out of it. So just to set that one up, it's going from two to four. That part's good. Definitely somewhere uh, all the way around in their washer. This distance is the outside one, which is 2x minus 2. The inside one is negative x plus 4. So my area be uh, pi times the bigger one squared minus the smaller one squared. And uh, I would. I would like multiply that out. But anyways, when you set it up, 2 to 4 pi 2x minus 2 squared minus negative x plus 4 squared dx. You're on your way, right? It's all it's all good. Um, that is that is all set. And again, I'm not going to do this one out, but I would definitely multiply that out, multiply out, combine some like terms. Um, so there's one option, one setup on that. Let's say instead I asked for um, this volume between them, so same same volume, but rotated over y. So that's going to be like this solid that has this hole in it. So as we think about setting this one up, since it's in terms of y, um, I notice that I need these equations in terms of y. So y equals 2x minus 2. Add 2, divide by 2. So I'm going to say y over 2 plus 1. Okay, that's this line. And then if uh, this one's going to be uh, 4 minus y. And that is this line. Now notice this is bound out here at 4. Right? We're rotating it. Uh, we're going in the... It's, this is bound over 4, but we're going from 0 up to, up to 5. I think that gets up to 5. Let me see. 8 minus 2. It looks like it actually gets up to 6. What I did was I plugged 4 in, and it gets up to 6. Uh, so I know my integral is going to go from 0 to 6. But now it's not so simple as like just like one of them minus the other one, because I'm going this way. So notice that from here, 
oh, I'm going to have to mess with this. It's not from zero to six. Because look, from here to here, I'll clean this up a little bit. Uh, that's, this would be my disk up here. So from here to here, notice this distance out to here is four. And this distance is to this line, which is the y over two plus one. So from two up to six, it's this washer, which would be four squared is 16 minus y over two plus one squared. But then in this part, notice it's four minus this line, which is the four minus y. So in this part, it's this washer. Still has a distance of four there. But this one is the four minus y. So this would be pi times 16, four squared, minus four minus y squared. So it's gonna be plus, uh, from 0 to 2, 16 minus the other line. And then you would have to work that out. So sketching these is important because sometimes um, it doesn't ask for the, it's not asking for the area in a certain way. So pay attention to what's sketched and where it's at. All right, semi questions, uh, post things in the forum. Take your time with these problems. Um, getting them down is it's a bit of work and it, it is worth it.